but with space programs crippled by the destruction of infrastructure, any hope of escaping the planet was nothing more than a distant dream. By the end of the first year, the world was a vastly different place from what it had been before the eruptions. Humanity had been pushed to the brink and survival was no longer guaranteed. But what about the long-term future? Would Earth ever recover from this catastrophe? Or was this the beginning of the end? In the final part, we'll explore what happens in the years that follow and whether there's any hope for rebuilding civilization. A full year had passed since every volcano on Earth erupted at the same time and the world had become almost unrecognizable. The once thriving cities were now abandoned ruins covered in layers of thick volcanic ash. The air remained toxic in many regions, forcing survivors to stay underground or within sealed off shelters. The few remaining governments had collapsed entirely, leaving behind only scattered groups of people, desperately trying to stay alive. Civilization as it once was had ceased to exist. But despite the overwhelming devastation, Earth itself had begun a slow process of recovery. The initial phase of the volcanic winter had peaked, and while thick clouds of ash still filled the atmosphere, some regions had started to see faint glimpses of sunlight breaking through. This offered a small sign of hope an indication that given enough time, the planet's natural systems might begin to stabilize. However, this recovery was not without its challenges. The climate had permanently changed. The average global temperature had dropped drastically, leading to what many now called a mini ice age. Entire regions that had once been warm and humid had transformed into frozen wastelands. While previously temperate zones experienced extreme unpredictable weather patterns, with ocean currents disrupted, hurricanes and superstorms had become more common and more destructive, reshaping coastlines and further eroding whatever remnants of civilization remained. The planet's ecosystems had also shifted dramatically. With so much plant life wiped out and marine ecosystems in collapse, many species had gone extinct. The animals that had survived were those that could adapt quickly. Scavengers, burrowing species, and deep sea creatures some forests had managed to withstand the disaster, particularly those in isolated areas where ashfall had been lighter. But for the vast majority of the planet, nature was in a state of rebuilding much like humanity. The biggest question that remained was whether humans could adapt to this new world. Many had already succumbed to starvation, disease, and exposure, but the most resilient had found ways to endure. Underground farming operations, though small, had begun producing limited amounts of food using artificial light and controlled environments. Engineers had developed new ways to filter and purify water, ensuring that at least some clean drinking sources remained available. In isolated regions, survivors had created small, self-sustaining communities 